It's official, AMD is releasing their Dual X3D 2.0 Monster Gaming Chip, along with new desktop APUs. This is huge, but before I get to that, AMD's plan to fight RAM prices, Nvidia is bringing back an old card, and DLSS 4.5 has a major issue. Welcome everyone to Gamer Mouth. So AMD just came up with a pretty wild plan to fight against the massive RAM prices. And while it's honestly sad that this has to be a solution, it's better than nothing. In a roundtable interview with AMD, the company's corporate VP and general manager, David McAfee, was discussing the problems with the memory crisis when he mentioned the possibility of bringing back older AM4 desktop chips, meaning CPUs that use DDR4 memory. Remember that I actually discussed this a little while back when the 9800 X3D prices started to sour as gamers were trying to find a solution to buying new memory. So not to toot my own horn, but maybe AMD's listening. Probably not, but that's okay. Because all that really matters is trying to help gamers out. Of course, DDR4 is getting more and more expensive as well, but I think this could be a solution for those wanting to upgrade their CPU without upgrading their memory. During the discussion, Mr. McAfee made it pretty clear that they want to reintroduce products back into the AM4 ecosystem, even going as far as to say they're very actively working on it. Like I said, this is something that I really wish didn't need to happen, but it is a real solution to this problem until prices can finally start coming down. And speaking of bringing old products back, Nvidia is apparently planning to bring back their RTX 3060. That's right, a GPU that originally launched all the way back in February of 2021, with reports in August of 2024 claiming that Nvidia told partners to place their final orders with the last chips moving through the supply chain. Well, it's now 2026, and according to one leaker, Nvidia is bringing back the GPU in Q1 of this year. Now, he didn't say whether it would be the 8 gigabyte or 12 gigabyte model, but either way, this is a really bad sign, even worse than releasing AM4 parts, because it means that memory prices could so directly affect GPU prices that Nvidia is being forced to bring back an old card, instead of offering an older platform so you don't have to upgrade. I'm not saying that this is Nvidia's fault or anything, they're merely reacting to market forces, but this is truly not looking good for GPU prices in the future. Next up, a lot of you already know that Nvidia released their new DLSS 4.5 at CES, and it is seriously impressive, but there's a major issue with it that you need to see. For those who haven't seen the new DLSS, a quick recap. DLSS 4.5 is a pretty major upgrade from Nvidia. For one, it comes with their second generation transformer model with better lighting accuracy, improved temporal stability, and less ghosting. But what's even more wild is that it also comes with six times multi-frame gen, meaning five generated fake frames for every real rendered frame. It's getting almost comical at this point. I mean, the input latency is going to be off the charts. Don't forget that while frame gen may look smoother, it feels worse because input can't be received until you render an actual frame, given generated frames are based off of the previous frame. So that's a negative, but I do have to give it to Nvidia because they also announced dynamic frame gen, which means the system tries to only use frame gen when it's absolutely needed. That part is definitely interesting, but there's one major issue with all of this. While DLSS 4.5 looks quite a bit better than 4.0, it comes at a serious cost. Specifically, Nvidia claims that it's a whopping five times more computationally expensive on the tensor cores. Immediately, you might think that's insane. But the good news is that it uses FPA precision, so it's able to mitigate a lot of the performance loss on cards that offer FPA. And this is where the problem comes in. Only the RTX 40 and 50 series cards have tensor cores with FPA compute, which means the RTX 30 and 20 series GPUs take a huge hit in performance. In fact, because you can force it into games with override inside the Nvidia app, some users got a chance to test it out. And on an RTX 3080 Ti, it saw up to a 24% FPS hit when going from DLSS 4.0 to 4.5. Basically, anyone still on the 20 or 30 series cards are not going to like this new upgrade. And you actually need to be careful when using DLSS overrides so you don't accidentally use the wrong one. Even with the RTX 40 or 50 series cards, Nvidia still claims that you'll see around a 2-3% performance drop. 
In fact, the new update is so demanding that NVIDIA only suggests using it in either performance or ultra performance modes. So it's so good that it still should mostly look better than 4.0 on those. Still, if you want to use DLAA, quality, or balance modes, they suggest using the J or K presets, which are DLSS 4.0. It's official, AMD just confirmed that they are in fact releasing their monster dual x 3 chip, as well as desktop APUs. If you saw my video on it, you know that AMD finally announced their Ryzen 9850X3D, and the leaks were completely spot on about it. Specs, everything. This kind of stuff is why you've got to subscribe. We heard about this weeks ago, but during the announcement, there was a strange omission. Also, for weeks, I've been discussing leaks regarding a 9950X3D2, which is a chip with 3D vCache on both chiplets, and we were expecting that to be released at CES, but they never did. Well, according to ComputerBase, who's currently at CES, AMD just told them two things. First, that they're planning to release the new Ryzen 400 series chips for AM5 in early Q2. And this alone is huge, because it means that AMD is finally releasing new desktop APUs. Don't forget that the most recent desktop APUs, the 8000G series, are based on Phoenix Point, which is now two steps behind the Ryzen 400 series. Though, of course, that's more of a refresh from the 300 parts. Still, we're talking going from Zen 4 to Zen 5 as well as RDNA 3 to 3.5, which means it goes from 8 to 12 cores, though keep in mind that some of those cores are little cores now. Actually, the big difference is in the iGPU, because it's going from 12 CUs to 16, which is a whopping 33% increase in core count alone, not including what you get out of the updated architecture. So this is set to be a serious upgrade for desktop APUs. But of course, the big news here is what he says next, and I actually have more proof of it beyond this. Either way, as you can see, they also claim that AMD said to quote, stay tuned for the Ryzen 9 9950X3D2, meaning it's definitely coming. In fact, there's proof that AMD originally planned to announce it at CES. First, Alienware China mentions the 9950X3D2 in a marketing copy, in a UK-based System Integrator announced a partnership with AMD for its new 9950X3D2. Basically, it's looking like AMD did originally plan to announce the chip at CES, but they pulled out at the last minute, sort of like what they did with the 9070 XT at last year's CES. So it's definitely coming, which means you've got to subscribe to find out as soon as it's announced. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's dual X3D chip, or are you more excited for their desktop APUs? Let me know down in the comments below.